In the same spot where Russell stopped the final phases of the Q3 practice, Lewis Hamilton had another awful USA GP, spinning out of the race. Additionally, it appears that the British driver is now tired of the issues he has encountered with the four-wheel drive Mercedes. Will Hamilton now face the most difficult races of his career with five more W15 races remaining, and Mercedes in general? Could this impact his first year at Ferrari, if it exists? Hamilton has undoubtedly had a terrible run since the summer break, and given that he won two races before the break, Spa and Silverstone, and that his best ever finish was P5 at Monza, you could say that he is quite disappointed. It appeared that the last-minute modifications made to the car, which are mysteriously always applied to Hamilton's car, had made it worse to drive. Mercedes was meant to bring a workable lot of upgrades to Austin. He spun off the same corner where Russell finished Saturday's qualifying session. Understanding this is a little strange, considering we are discussing the unchallenged king of Dakota, who has won six times since the race's inception in 2012. And it's definitely not like me to watch him act like a newbie when under duress. When discussing it, Hamilton acknowledged that he has never spun here in his career as far as he can recall, implying that the car's setup, which the team put together just a few hours prior to the qualifying session, left him in a dismal position as he finished Q1 and began the race in P17. Further elaborating on this, Hamilton said, I had a great start to the race. Obviously I shot up the inside and got up to 12th, and at that point it was only the second lap. So I'm not flat out, not pushing particularly, just trying to manage tyres. The car started bouncing on the way in, and then it just lost all load of the rear and just went around on me. I've never spun in the race before, not that I remember at least, and if I have, it can only be once, maybe before in all these years, definitely frustrating. But I do know that it wasn't that I wasn't, it's just unfortunate. What would pain Hamilton the most is the fact that Russell finished P6 starting on the hard tyre from the pit lane, the same tyre that the seven-time world champion started on. And one could only imagine where the Brit would have ended up. If he didn't spin out as he made five positions in a couple of laps without a particular wear of the tyres, obviously Mercedes is the only team on the grid to have not understood the rules completely and the fact that they are still struggling to bring performance with their upgrades with Ferrari, having a 1-2 finish and Red Bull and McLaren being right up there with pace. It's a devastating and miserable finish for Hamilton's Mercedes reign in Austin. And Toto Wolff had nothing but regret for the way the race ended up for Hamilton, as the Austrian himself was aware that there is nothing that he could have done in order to avoid that crash. It's not about the abilities of the driver, but the way the car was assembled. Before the sprint race started, Hamilton reported a clicking sound from in front of the car, something that he believed would ruin his race to a greater extent, and that turned out to be the suspension of the W15. With the team having to restructure the entire car for the race weekend, including qualifying, it was obvious that Hamilton was quite disappointed with the performance of the W15, and when being told the information that the car was nowhere near where it was during the sprint, the seven-time world champion desperately asked, where has the car gone, man? But the issue that Hamilton had. During the race is something that he also suffered from throughout the first and only practice session in Austin, and when talking about it, the seven-time world champion stated that maybe the new upgrade package had something to do with it, because of the fact that Russell was so competitive with the Singapore spec car that Allison labelled as a learning part of their upgrade scheme. Furthermore, Hamilton said in practice one I had the same issue with the left foot brake front bouncing and the rear end just came around the same as George in qualifying. I had the spin in turn three, which is so rare. I was just saying about George obviously having the same problem on Saturday. He has gone back to the old spec car and is looking good out there. So maybe there is something with the new upgrade. What goes to show a Hamilton's devotion to the team is the fact that he offered his car's upgrades to Russell after the crash as the team didn't have enough spare parts to mount on Russell's car, after the crash in qualifying. Still, the team denied this, which hints that they might have more trust in the upgrades that were present in Singapore rather than the ones they brought in Austin, even though Wolf has strongly denied that. Whether or not the Austin upgrades are going to work, the upcoming race in Mexico will no doubt reveal all. But as of now, it does look like Mercedes is in a dysfunctional environment that is only pushing away high-profile engineers and drivers like Hamilton. Again, 
Wolfe has nothing to do here but defend Hamilton. However, it's now obvious that Lewis has lost all trust in his engineers and even Bono as well, because it's more than obvious that Mercedes is not really paying too much attention to him. And? And his car after he announced his move to Ferrari. Whether they have the right to feel betrayed by his move, it's up to them and their personal feelings. But manifesting that on the track, and with the car's behaviour, is definitely something that shouldn't be happening, especially not with the man who brought so much success to your team. When talking about Hamilton's crash in Austin, Wolf said, Where I sit at the moment, it's 100% not Lewis's fault, and that's not to say that I'm protecting him. You, it's clear that it was gusty. There was a slipstream. How does all of that interact? It was 100% the car. Lewis was not even pushing at that stage. We saw it with George on Saturday. Perhaps that was maybe over-pushing it, but still abruptly losing it and putting it in the wall. On Sunday there was wind and a bit of dirty air from the car in front. We definitely have an issue and I don't know if the issue was the same yesterday. Lewis Hamilton doesn't lose the car on that. This is probably one of the reasons why Lewis is now eagerly waiting for the last five races to be done and dusted, because his future team has all of a sudden arisen as a candidate to compete in the Constructors' Championship as well, being just eight points behind Red Bull at this stage, 44 behind McLaren, the upgrades that the Maranello team has brought to Austin weren't that extensive, and it seems like this was the best thing to do on a sprint weekend where you have limited time to test them. The race pace and the tyre preservation were definitely on point, and it goes to show that the one to finish was definitely not lucky, but on point. Pure race merit still Wolf is now adamant that the problem is not in the nature of the upgrades saying that they will continue with the same specification in Mexico, the question is whether or not they will be able to extract the maximum out of it. And when talking about this, he said, I don't think we have a fundamental issue with the upgrades. Very much. I think it's more... interaction. More arrow and mechanical stuff. And therefore, I mean, we're going to continue with the up. It makes no sense to not, because there's a lot of lap time you leave on the table. But on the other side, you need to be very open-minded. It's more about getting on top of why we have a car that on Friday is by far the quickest before the Colapinto situation. Hamilton was four tenths up, and the last sector was just trouble, but he would have been quickest. And then on Saturday, with all this in mind, do you think that Hamilton is being treated unfairly in Mercedes? And what's even more important, do you think that he's now eagerly waiting for these last five races to pass by? so that a new chapter in Ferrari will bring a bit more joy to his career. Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you want to learn more about the latest drama between Norris and Verstappen and their Toto racing in Austin, make sure to click on the video that's on your screen right now. Let us know what you think in the comments below. And once you've done that, have a look at the video that's appearing on your screen right now.